Festival. Are you psyched or what? Thank you. What's up, New York? After September 11th, <clears throat> you know, it gave everybody so much material to draw from because we were all, you know, we were all suffering hate crimes and racism and dirty looks and airport security and I got detained in Mexico for two hours and put in a cell with drug smugglers because my name's Ahmed Ahmed and I'm on the FBI's most wanted list from what I understand. Welcome to the Access of Evil tour. <laughs> Some of you might know who I am and some of you might not, but for those of you that don't know who I am, my name really is Ahmed Ahmed, and I can't fly anywhere. <laughs> you guys too? <laughs> it's a bad time to be named uh, Ahmed, and my name is Ahmed Ahmed, so it's <laughs> really fucking bad. <laughs> All you white people have it easy. You guys get to the airport like an hour, two hours before your flight. It takes me a month and a half. <laughs> Security's gotten so bad now, I just show up to the airport in a G-string. I'm like, hey, guys, go. The stewardesses are always the funniest because they're the ones on the plane. They have the, you know, the fly list of all the names, you know? So, like, they'll walk by and they kind of like, you know, that's when I purposely pull out my Koran. Where do you go? Like, I'm real... I'm sitting, true story, I'm sitting on the plane flying United Airlines, and, and they, they pulled me off the plane. I had my seatbelt on, the engines were already going, I thought we were like on our way. Somebody from the ticket counter comes up to me, like, Mr. Ahmed, I'm like, yeah, we have some questions we want to ask you, we're going to have to pull you off the plane. I got here a month and a half ago, you kidding me? I comply, because I know what's going on in the world. I take off my seatbelt, and I'm getting out of my seat. The two white guys sitting next to me were like... <laughs> I thought he was a Mexican. We were sitting next to Al Qaeda the whole time. I'm like, I'll be right back, bitch. Just say my seat. I'll be right back. It's bullshit. Then I go down to the ticket counter. I get the same reaction every time. Show that woman my ID. She does one of these. After 9-11, I was so worried about my last name that when I want to say it's the first time after 9-11, like two weeks later, I used my middle name. I went up as Dean Joseph. <laughs> I'm not kidding. You guys laugh. I was really worried. that I would say, oh, be down. And someone goes, what kind of name is that? I mean, we're in New York where 9-11 happened. People were, yeah. there was anger. I just hope you never feel self-conscious when comfortable in your own country at any time. It's a true, I'm based on a credit card. True story. Guy behind the counter picked up my credit card, sees the olive card, looks at me all weird. He's like, hey, hey buddy, what kind of name is, uh, uh, that? <laughs> I'm like, well, well, sir, it's an Arabic name. He goes, yeah, what, what does this mean? <laughs> so I'm like, well, well, translate it to English? It means peaceful, friendly Arab? <laughs> <laughs> but he's not happy. He goes, yeah, what Arab country is your family from? So I'm sure the most peaceful, popular one that he would like. So I'm like, we're from the same Arab country that Aladdin is from. <laughs> I grew up in Northern Jersey and Lodi, New Jersey, and I'm from Lodi. I'll, let me tell you the ethnic diversity of Lodi, New Jersey when I was growing up. You were either Italian or you were my dad. <laughs> that was the town. And my dad has an accent. He's born in Palestine. And the Jersey kids in Northern Jersey, they have an accent too. So it's like a battle of the accents growing up. Like, the Jersey kids come over and see my dad. They're like, hey, Mr. Obidala, what's going on? How you doing? What's going on? <laughs> my dad's just like, I don't know what is going on. <laughs> Jersey kids are like, your dad's just such a freaking weird accent. Where is he from? 
I'm like, well, he was born in Palestine. And they're like, oh, southern Jersey? I'm like, no, no, the Middle East. Like, oh, like Ohio? Again, like, yeah, just like Ohio. It was a mystery to them. It was such a mystery, I actually want my father, and that means that the show and tell, my teacher made me bring him in, to show and tell, like in third grade. And a friend of mine goes, were the kids afraid? I'm like, he's an Arab, he wasn't an animal. Look at that he wheeled him in a cage with a sheep. Like, Behold the Arab man! No, don't flash! You'll anger him! The character I read for was terrorist number four. Not number one, not number two, number four. And, um, and I was already well in my comedy career at this point, <clears throat> so I didn't take it that serious. And I read my lines way over the top. And, uh, you know, I was like, sit down, you will obey, or I'll kill you in the name of Allah, you know, th stuff like that. And the director went nuts, and he was like, that was brilliant, Ahmad. Let me see you do it again, but this time with more, you know, Arab, you know how your people are very, you know, he's trying to say that we're angry. And I was just like, okay, angry, is that what you want? Yes, yes. So I did it one more time, and I got a call the next morning that they want to use me in this movie. And I started laughing on the phone because I wasn't even, like, I was making fun of, of, the, poor, uh, of the role. I wasn't trying to be like that. And, and that's what they want, though. They want to see Arabs, you know, who, who will, will portray that. If I didn't take the part, they're going to give it to a Mexican guy. Literally give it to a Mexican guy who looks Arab, who will do a, a you know, cheesy Arab accent. Like today, I got a, literally today, I got a phone call from a late night comedy show, which I've done extra work on, or like under five, asked me if I want to be on a, like a Middle Eastern dating show where there's two guys and a girl, and the girl picks the one guy, and they're Arabs, and the guy who loses blows himself up with a, with a bomb. And I'm like, uh, I'm not doing that. Pre-9-11, being of Arabic heritage in New York City, I, some woman viewed me as exotic, sort of like kiwi. <laughs> you know, sweet, tasty, a little hairy. <laughs> Lately, the kind of girls I've been attracting are girls that want to get back at their mom and dad. So they want to date me because I'm Arab, so that's dangerous. <laughs> I'll meet a white girl, she'll be like, he's tall, he's dark, he's hairy, and I think he's a terrorist. <laughs> My parents would hate him, he's perfect. Every culture has struggled with that stereotype, we're just the last. It's a bad time to be from the Middle East because, you know, I read a statistic that said hate crimes against Arabs and Muslims went up over a thousand percent right after 9-11, which still put us in fourth place behind blacks, gays, and Jews. It's true. So what do we have to do? <laughs> Just can you lay off for a few weeks? Mitzi Shore from the Comedy Store in L.A. said the complete opposite. If, if we waited, then it would just build up and resonate. So it was important for Arab comedians to go up right away and say, hey, we had nothing to do with it. We're on your team, you know, and we're just saying this to you so none of you fuckers follow us out to the car after the show. <laughs> That's why we need, like, a major film. It just portrays Arab Americans as Arab Americans. Just like a normal film, like Cosby show with Arab Americans. So people see it's not just stereotypes, and the jokes are just ste about stereotypes. You know, touched by an Arab. Touched by an Arab. Everybody loves Ramadan. You know. Teach them how to hate women and make bombs. <laughs> you know, I can't do that show because Midwestern guys already know how to do that, so. My point is that with comedy, though, we can dispel all that, all that stereotype and all that, you know, negativity, and, you know, we're allowed to do it in a way where it's mm -hmm. not, we're not politicians. Mr. Ahmed, where are you flying this afternoon? So I looked at her and I said, uh, I have a one-way ticket to Petra, though, it's my friend. <laughs> Hawaii, I'm going to Hawaii. <laughs> Mr. Ahmed, did you pack your bags yourself? Yes. Anybody asked you to carry anything since you've been in the airport? No. Have your bags left your site since you've been in the airport? No. You're under arrest. Code red, code red. <laughs> We've got a sand monkey at Terminal 4, code red. Sand monkey at Terminal 4. And uh, he's a hairy one. Get over here quickly. Uh, Terminal 4 will be right there. We're still searching this black guy, this gay guy, and this Jew.